This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. As we continue our hour looking at banned books, we're joined now by the pioneering graphic novelist Art Spiegelman. In January, the McMinn County Board of Education in Athens, Tennessee, voted 10 to 0 to ban Art Spiegelman's Pulitzer Prize-winning graphic novel, Mouse, from its eighth-grade language arts curriculum. Mouse tells the story of Art's parents, who survived the Holocaust. In the graphic novel, he depicts Jewish characters as mice and Nazis as cats. Mouse is the German word for mouse. The school board claimed it banned the graphic novel because of profanity and nudity. Attention around the ban has resulted in Mouse shooting to the top of the bestseller list, along with other works by Spiegelman, who is one of the most celebrated graphic novelists in the world. The ban comes amidst a wave of book bans pushed by right-wing groups across the United States. Art Spiegelman joins us now once again uh, from his home in New York. Welcome back to Democracy Now!, Art. It's great to have you with us, unfortunately, under these circumstances, though congratulations on what often happens, is that when you have a book censored like this, your book, Mouse, about mouse and about Mauschwitz, right, uh, uh, Auschwitz, um, it shoots to the top of the bestseller list. You you cannot get it in bookstores now. It is hard to get online. It'll take weeks or months to get. Um, can you talk about, first, your response to this banning, and then what Mouse is all about for, what pe for, who, for people who don't know? Uh, well, my first reaction, and I'm still trying to get over it, is just bafflement. Uh, because of the grounds on which it was banned. And my first response had been, well, gee, what are these Holocaust-denying crazies in Tennessee all about? And as I kind of beat it in on it more, I realized, no, no, they're not necessarily stupid Nazis. They're just stupid about what might work for their children uh, in an in, you know, educational context to let them understand what happened to my family. Um, what was the second part of your question, Amy? Um, to tell us about Mouse, to tell us okay. what happened to your parents. Okay. Uh, my parents are both uh, survivors of the death camps, Polish Jews, who uh, hatched me when I was in Sweden while they were there as a displaced couple. Uh, in Sweden, they eventually came to America when I was about three years old. And um, so my father and mother didn't talk that much about this in a way that I could understand when I was growing up. My father just didn't want to talk about it at all, saying people don't want to hear such stories. And he was just building himself as best he could a life in America. My mother would let me know things, but in spurts that were absolutely terrifying and not with any context. And when I got older, after my mother had committed suicide in 1968, when I was 20, I um, just asked my father more about what happened, and it led to me uh, being glued to hearing his story. It's one of the first times he and I could sit in a room together and not get into an argument. And here I was wrapped in finding out what the story was. It's as if he had been waiting for me to ask as an adult. And that led over a period of 13 years to trying to put this into book form. I never well, wanted. Or, oh, oh, I, I, I never. I'm sorry, Art, uh, Art Spiegelman. I wanted to ask you the uh, one of the 10 to zero voters uh, at the McKin uh, McKinn County School Board. One of those school board members said of your book, "quote It shows people hanging. It shows them killing kids." Why does the educational system promote this kind of stuff? It's not wise or healthy. Uh, your response uh, to their concern, not so much about what actually happened, but, but someone actually telling what happened. Well, let's see. Um, I believe it's very misguided on their part uh, to, to do this, and I think that sentence just leaked out of the school board member's mouth, but 
because they seem to be incredibly focused on a few bad words uh, like damn, goddamn, which I always thought of as a kind of G-rated curse word. But also uh, what would leak out is how disturbed they were by some of the images from the past, although they're trying to focus on an image of what they called a nude woman. And I would prefer to have called that they had called a naked corpse of his mother in a bathtub. Uh, and I suppose it could have placated them if I redrew it with her wearing a bathrobe while in the bath, because there's a suggestion that she's naked, and naked seems like a more appropriate word for this than nude, which has sexual connotations. They tried to focus there, but what would keep leaking out, and then, is, and, and then there's pictures of hanged mice and children being killed. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that's the story um, of what actually happened. But I would say that in some ways, I think it's just a displacement of their own anxieties. I believe that fewer books about the genocide of the Jews have been banned uh, up to this point than the ones that Mr. Johnson was talking about, about uh, gender uh, and about race. But it's all under attack. And um, I would like to say that unlike uh, Mr. Johnson's book, this book was never intended for children, so it added to my confusion, because I thought, like, I was making, after 13 years, uh, a thing that didn't quite have the name graphic novels yet. I just thought I was making a long comic book for grown-ups that could be reread and uh, worked with, because comics offer so much uh, rich possibility for dealing with memory. When you read a comic, you read from left to right, your eye is always going back to the past, the panel before, and inching toward the future, which are the panels after the one you're staring at. And it allows one to understand um, how close we are to the past, as I think uh, William Faulkner said uh, about the past. It's never really past. Uh, so I thought children should be protected, and I never intended it to be for young adults, children, whatever. But over the years, I've had to change my opinion. When I first got a, um, an award from the New York Public Library for Best Young Adult Book, I was annoyed because I thought 13 years to make a book for adults, and here it is uh, getting a young adult award. And I've had to modify my position over the years because I've now met many, many children who studied it in school, who found it on their own, who were given it by their parents. And it actually uh, is received with a, de a degree of real wisdom in their reading based on the people I've talked to, the young people. So I give up. It's um, comics are for whoever can understand them. Certainly the school board doesn't really. And I think one of the things that makes the book so powerful is exactly the part of the book they seemed to be especially concerned by, which has to do with not the past per se, but my relationship with my parents that was my link to the past and my uh, unorthodox way of dealing with them. Unorthodox, not just as a Jew, but uh, in general, being part of the underground comics world of the 60s and 70s, taboo breaking seemed natural to me. I didn't realize that uh, one taboo among all the others was uh, being angry at one's parents, at one's child of survivors. At that time, I, they were just inventing the phrase second generation. And the obligation that most um, people in my situation inherited was don't upset your parents. They've already been through enough. My own anger was enough to overcome that taboo without thinking about it, because I was trying to just find out who they were, who I was, how I got to be here when uh, the odds were against it, being born after the war by two people who were slated for uh, genocidal murder. But I think it's that link of me talking with my parents that make, made the book better as a didactic tool than if I had intended it as such, because it allows somebody a window into uh, finding what happened to the past among other people who also didn't experience it. And this was um, evidently very effective, because not everybody had a father who threw out their coat uh, I'm sorry, not everybody had a father who went through the Holocaust, but everybody had a parent, has a parent, that did something equivalent to throwing out a favorite coat because that was his way of taking control. As a result, 
when kids would come up to me and say, God, your conversations with your grandfather were so uh, important for me to read. And I felt that was a real compliment because I think at this point, I'm the one old enough to be their grandfather and they just identified with me as the mouse masked character in the book. Art, I wanted to go to your father in his own words, mouse based largely on your interviews that you conducted with your dad, Vladek. Uh, this is an excerpt of an interview you did with him in 1972 about his life during the Holocaust. The audio was included in the MetaMouse DVD extra. But after three days, they took us out from prison. Everybody who had to go to Auschwitz. And outside was standing a closed bus without windows. We saw opened a very small, two tiny small windows. In the truck, we were all together. I, mother, and women, men, and everybody we together. Sure we were sure that we are going to be finished. We knew that we were going to Auschwitz. Oh, and you knew that Auschwitz was a death but, camp? Yes, but we knew that we'll go there and we'll not come out anymore. This we knew, that we'll get us and burn us and all. Did you know about the showers? Yes, Did sure. Everybody we knew, knew everything. That? Late, it was very late in season. The war started in 1939, and this was 1943 already. And we knew everything what was going on. Till 1943, I was in ghettos and hiding. From 43, when they finished everything, then I came to Auschwitz. And this is your father, Vladek, explaining to you what he saw at Auschwitz when he was forced to disassemble the gas chambers. Hadn't they heard about the showers before? They had, but this I have seen when I came over there, how it worked. I have heard much about it, but now I have seen everything. I am telling you only this, what I have seen, what I went through, not this, what people were talking, rumors and other things. From there, it was a little corridor. You went into a shower room. It was a big, big shower room full of showers, maybe 100, maybe 150, maybe 90 showers there. From the ceiling down, it looked like the showers that are coming out of water. And the door, it was hermetic closed. It was a very heavy door, and it was covered with some insulation. But when the people went in there, they closed the door, and the door had also a little window in the middle to look in there to the shower room. So people went in there with the soap and the towel, and they waited for water that would come up from the showers. But instead of the water came gas, poison gas. It poisoned them from half an hour till three quarters. And the German, they looked in there through the window until everybody is dead. And that's your dad, Vladek, talking to you back in 1972. And I wanted to go to your family tree, which you illustrate in a genealogical project you published in 2011 in MetaMouse. Um, we're showing the images you drew of a branch of the Spiegelman family tree in 1939, at the start of World War II. And then the second image shows the same family tree at the end of World War II. To, with almost all of the names now missing. And you dedicate Mouse to your older brother, who you never met, who did not make it out of the Holocaust. Art, if you can talk about all of this and what is being erased when your book is banned, what we lose access to. Well, we lose access to understanding a genocidal system built by fascists and authoritarians. And although I never made the book to teach anybody anything but to understand how I got to be here, um, it's clearly an important book for now. So I'm grateful for its second life as a didactic tool, because it probably is the best way to teach young people uh, about what happened in a way that uh, they seem to be able to grasp fully, partially because of the uh, carefully built comics format. I'm really grateful, incidentally, that you played my father's voice, because there's no audio component to the book except in MetaMouse, of course, uh, that has a DVD. But uh, I tried to capture his voice in the way he spoke English, which was about his third language or so, uh, and how eloquent he could be in his own put-together version of English. And that's part of the book's power. The closest I could come is after having shown uh, drawings of cats and mice or people in cat and mouse masks, at least, to uh, 
I'll get myself to be able to do the book, to be able to insert a picture of my father that he had taken of himself in a clean Auschwitz uniform as a souvenir, uh, was as close as I could come to giving you the dissonance between the presentations as I'm envisioning them and the person who's transmitting the story, because he looks rather well-fed at that point in a very crisp uniform that he put on in a DP camp where souvenir photos, if that's the right word, were actually being taken. And it indicates how photography, which is taken as closer to true than a drawing, um, isn't necessarily the way that gives one clearest and fullest access to the realities at a time where when authoritarianism and fascism um, the whiff of those things is all over our country right now, alas. And um, this allows us to um, have some kind of access that I believe feels trustworthy. Uh, Art Spiegelman, I wanted to ask you, the, the use of uh, graphic uh, literature or, or graphic books to explore some of these very profound issues. You mentioned earlier on that it was in the 60s that you got exposed to uh, the uh, underground uh, 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 underground uh, cartoon world. Uh, Mad Magazine, I think, was one of your inspirations. What was most appealing to you about Mad Comics and, and its impact on how you tell a story? Wow. Well, there's an um, artist who profoundly affected me named Harvey Kurtzman, who was the a uh, great comics artist and uh, writer, and also the editor of a series of comics about war called Frontline Combat and Two-Fisted Tales that told real war stories very thoroughly researched in a way that is potent. And Mad, which basically was uh, one of the most effective critiques of the adult world uh, that could be offered to whoever wanted it, children, of course, included, because it was saying, the whole adult world is lying to you. And of course, dear children, we too are adults. So you got to learn to think for yourself. And I think that was a very potent message, very carefully deconstructed with beautiful comics grammar in terms of how panels were organized on pages. And um, he made me want to be a comic book artist before I could read. I'm wondering your thoughts on ABC News suspending the comedian and actor Whoopi Goldberg from The View. I mean, it was an amazing moment on The View, because she's decrying Mouse being um, uh, banned in Tennessee, um, but did say it wasn't about race, the Holocaust. It, uh, it was about man's inhumanity to man. Uh, she afterwards apologized um, and said she now understood, you know, Hitler talking about Jews as an inferior race. Your thoughts that that's the fallout uh, from the banning? Well, I believe she should have been left on TV, especially after she apologized. But in any case, because I think in this age, we're all adult, including Whoopi Goldberg. And I think she had conflicting images of where we're at right now, in the sense that uh, somehow us Jews have become honorary white <laughs> in this moment, and that allowed her to get uh, a bit confused about where the issues really are. And I got to say, I'm a First Amendment fundamentalist, and therefore um, not as upset about the, uh, I don't know, I hate using the word, but for now, let's say cancel culture, uh, as a way of uh, redressing the great wrongs that um, Mr. Johnson was talking about in your previous segment. Uh, but it's all kind of ball of confusion, like the attempts to ban uh, Huckleberry Finn over the decades uh, by Mark Twain, where actually uh, Jim is uh, probably the most, um, the wisest and most fully realized character in the book. Uh, and I think Mark Twain must have been aware of it. He wrote it. Uh, and I think that it's uh, misguided because the language includes a trigger word uh, in his story. But that, that's the word that was absolutely current back then. And therefore, although I love it when I find books on my own and was indeed a little worried when I first heard Mouse was being put into this uh, um, curriculum, just because I don't know who's ready to read this, who isn't ready to read this, but in a, a situation like the one that the uh, teachers who were testifying to the Board of Parents put it, uh, 
This is things that happened. This book has been shown to be very effective at teaching that. Uh, this is a Art Spiegelman, mistake. we have to leave it there, but I thank you so much for being with us. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Stay safe.